Brown's house. You've come in on Youth Sunday, so if you're a first-time visitor here at the church, you're in for a special treat. Many of us have watched the young people in our church grow up over the years, and this time of the year they get to share a little bit about their faith development and what you have done as partners in that. They're going to lead us in worshiping and praising God today. I was here at their rehearsal yesterday, and I couldn't wait to come and be a part of this worship service, and I hope you enjoy it as well. You will hear God speak today, and you will be touched with the Spirit of God. Before we move into worship, though, you may not have greeted people who are seated near you, so let's stand and introduce ourselves to one another. I'm trying to tell the ushers with hand signals, turn them till you feel a click because they're strobing in the balcony right now and they're starting to dance up there. So, I'd like to ask you to take a moment and look through the announcements in the bulletin. You will find that the life of the church is not just a Sunday event. Luckily, it goes every day of the week and we do have activities throughout the week for you. We hope you'll come and be a part of that with us. Hope you'll also take a moment and register attendance on the Ritual of Friendship pad that's at the end of the pew in which you're seated. Please pass that down so that everyone has an opportunity to sign. And again, I want to thank you for what you've done to prepare the young people who are going to lead us now in worship. We are here because this is God's house. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God.
join us in the call to worship. You are holy, O oh God, infinite and holy. Trees clap their hands for you. Oceans, Oceans they, dance. they dance for you. A billion suns rise for you. Clouds paint the skies for you. Mountains stand tall for you. Come like the dawn. Like grace. Like sunlight. Bring this world to light. Please stand for our hymn. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, <clears throat> forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Please join me in the prayer of confession. <clears throat> Holy God, though we like to think we live with our eyes wide open, we confess that other ten we join the blind man on the side of the road, unable to see what is right before us. And so we sit and wait in need of your healing and in need of sight to see the world through your eyes. When we are blind to the silent suffering of our friends and to the pain we cause others to feel, give us sight. When we are blind to the desperate hunger and need of those who live across the seas and across our own neighborhood streets, give us sight. Holy God, even though our vision can be hazy, you unravel all the layers of our blindness. Help us to release all of our darkness, all of our cast shadows, all of our blindness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Friends, no matter how many layers cover our eyes, no matter how many times we avert our gaze, God's promise holds true. We are washed clean, we are set free, we are led beyond the darkness into new light. And with this new sight, we no longer sit and wait. We act, we go, we serve. And now, let us present our tithes and offerings.
Dear Lord, each of us is a fragile miracle, evidence in God's creative hands and amazing grace. We are each unique, unrepeatable gifts to the world. We are proof of God's love. And so, we who are the gifts of creation now give gifts to our Creator, gifts brought in love. Amen. Now it's time for the time with younger disciples. So. something called an energizer and we do it early in the morning to wake us up get our minds going and the reason we do that is because we have worship at night and I mean that's late it's at like seven o'clock but then we have back home group which is at 11 and that can go a long time like, times we don't want to discuss um but we're going to do an energizer today that we all love up there in Montreal and if everyone wants to stand up we're going to teach it to you it's called revolution and everyone in the congregation can stand up too. It's pretty fun. It's easy to learn. It's not a lot of movement. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna stick your arm up, one arm up, and then you're gonna stick your other arm up and make a cross. And then you're gonna throw your arm down that's a cross, down really fast, and then your other arm down. And then you're gonna repeat it, first arm up, second arm up, and then you're gonna wave it in the air. So. All right, good. And then there's a rolling. So you're gonna start down low and roll around in a circle. And just roll, roll, roll. All the way around. Gets, gets the back all loosened up for you in the morning. And then you're gonna dig in the dirt and then pat the sky. Dig in the dirt, pat in the sky. And then we're gonna swim. Walk and swim, walk and swim. And then we're gonna, woo, 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 woo. and then we're gonna hitchhike back. So, hitchhike and use your hitchhiker thumbs. And then we're gonna raise the roof. And then we're gonna do some rolling again, some digging, some sky patting, and we're gonna have some fun. All right, you ready to do revolution? Book of Revelation, chapter seven. Verses 16 and 17. Yes, sir. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst anymore. Preach, preach out. For God shall wipe away. Yes, sir. Every tear from the eyes. Yes, sir.
You don't get any prize yet. You all get All right, guys. Well, now that we're done, let's say a prayer and we can go back. All right? All right. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us the energy so we can dance and have a great time doing energizers and getting our mind ready to focus on you. Um, help us love you and do things to your glory. In, our name, in your name we pray. Let us pray. We pray for children who sneak popsicles before supper, who erase holes in math workbooks, who can never find their shoes. And we pray for those who stare at photographers from behind barbed wire, who can't bound down the street in a new pair of sneakers, who never counted potatoes, who are born in places where we wouldn't be caught dead, who never go to the circus who live in an X-rated world. We pray for children who bring us sticky kisses and fistfuls of dandelions, who sleep with the cat and bury goldfish, who hug us in a hurry and forget their lunch money, who squeeze toothpaste all over the sink, who slurp their soup. And we pray for those who never get dessert, who have no safe blanket to drag behind them who watch as their parents watch them die, who can't find any bread to steal, who don't have any rooms to clean up, whose pictures aren't on anybody's dresser, and whose monsters are real. We pray for children who spend all their allowance before Tuesday, who throw tantrums in the grocery store and pick at their food, who like ghost stories, who shove dirty clothes under the bed and never rinse out the, the bathtub, who get visits from the tooth fairy, who don't like to be kissed in front of the carpool, who squirm in church or temple and scream in the phone, whose tears we sometimes laugh at and whose smiles can make us cry. And we pray for those whose nightmares come in the daytime, who will eat anything, who have never seen a dentist, who aren't spoiled by anybody, who go to bed hungry and cry themselves to sleep, who live and move, but have no being. We pray for children who want to be carried and also for those who must, for those we never give up on and for those who don't get a second chance, for those we smother and for those who will grab the hand of anybody kind enough to offer it. We pray for all children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second commandment is equally important. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. You may know me from Sunday School, Vacation Bible School, Christ Kids, Youth Group, Honduras Mission Trips, or just attending church on Sundays. But if you don't, I'm Hadley Owen. I'm a graduated senior, and I've been lucky enough to grow up in this church. My dad started bringing me here when I was about three years old which doesn't seem that long ago. And ever since then, I've been a regular attender and have participated in so many great things. I was hooked on church as a child when I went to my first Sunday school class, taught by Katie Roberts and Miss Amanda. 
I remember it was such a welcoming place where I could play and do crafts, but grow in God's love at the same time. When I started getting older, I began getting more and more involved. I continued to be a regular attender to Sunday school, but as I spent more time here, I found so many more ways to be involved. Do you remember a skit we did one bright Sunday a few years back called Miss Fanny's Hat? Well, I played little old adorable Miss Fanny. And do you remember that girl that played ukulele or violin a few times in church right over there? That was also me. I've also been to Honduras, helped with Vacation Bible School, worked in our libraries, and even in the nursery. All of these experiences have taught me so much and shaped me to who I am today. For the past seven years, I've spent at least two hours here every Wednesday or Sunday night at youth group in fellowship with what have come to be some of my very best friends. For example, Emily Snyder and Warren Gerard, who I can be seen zipping around town with pretty much every day. Youth group means so much to me and is my absolute favorite place to spend time. We've seen so many cool concerts, been on so many meaningful trips, and helped so many people with our hands and feet service projects that it's hard to imagine my life without it. Along with me helping others, I've had some awesome adults who have helped me grow, one of which is our youth director, Dana. She is the sweetest and most caring person I know. Another is Mrs. Harris, who gives the best advice and is the wisest person I know. These two combined have helped me countless times with prayers, advice, and just listening to what I have to say. Youth group to me is a place to play, a place to laugh, a place to make friends, a place to ask questions, but most importantly is a place to share my faith. Each summer, the youth group attends Montreat Youth Conference in Montreat, North Carolina. This is my favorite week of the summer and possibly my favorite week out of the whole year. Over this six day period, we experience so much, learn so much and bond with each other so much. Memories are made and traditions are upheld. One of my favorite memories of Montreat was one time after the nightly worship service, Emily Snyder and I decided to walk home. Too bad that a few minutes into our walk, it started to rain. We kept on with our journey, using the light from our phones to make shadow puppets to entertain us as we walked. We eventually completed the 30 minute trek, arrived home, dried off, and began to tell the story to our friends. And of course, it wouldn't feel like Montreat without Warren sitting in the front of the bus, singing songs to us over the loudspeaker, and all of us eventually joining in. One experience that I believe has had the biggest effect on me was when I joined the Honduras mission team. I have now traveled to Honduras twice with this awesome group, and we have done so much good and touched so many lives during each trip. My favorite thing to do in Honduras is blow bubbles for the children. Now, you have to understand that these kids come from families that have nothing, and they have most likely walked very far with their parents to get wherever we have set up the clinic for that day. So when they see you pull out a bubble wand and start blowing bubbles, their faces absolutely light up. They run around and chase the bubbles in efforts to pop them, giggling and laughing the whole way. It's awesome to see that something as simple as bubbles could have such a profound effect on these children. I'm so thankful that my dad encouraged me to go to Honduras for the first time in 2014. And I'm so thankful for Dr. Negley and Uncle Gene Aspie and everyone who helps to make the trip so meaningful, fun, and all around wonderful. This Tuesday, I'll be packing up all my stuff and heading about two and a half hours away to Gainesville to attend the University of Florida. I will be studying marketing and sociology. I plan on joining clubs, a college age youth group, and a church. A few months back, when it really hit me that I'd be moving out and leaving Winter Haven, the first thing that came to my head was that I wouldn't be able to come to church. And many people have told me, and yes, I know that I will be able to go to church, but I won't be able to come to First Presbyterian Church of Winter Haven and see all of you, my church family. And that is something I'll most definitely miss. Good morning. My name is Emily Alexander. I grew up in the church and was baptized in November of 1998. At that time, Dr. Negley walked me up and down those aisles right in between there and introduced me to my church family. From that moment on, I have flourished from the love and support of my church family. 
Growing up in the church, I would watch my grandfather, Rich Dobler, sing in the choir, and my grandmother, if I was good enough, would give me church candy. And of course, that's none other than Smarties. I remember when I was a little girl, probably around the age of about four or five, I thought it was so cool how everyone would stand when Dr. Negley would raise his hands and say, please stand. And so, and also when he told everyone to please be seated, they listened. So I decided that day I was gonna stand in the front pew in front of everybody and raise my hands and have them stand for me. <laughs> I heard everybody laugh behind me and I thought it was so cool. I had the biggest smile on my face. As I got older, I started participating in VBS, Christ Kids, Sunday School, and there were so many others that I participated in. There were the teachers, of course, I cannot think enough. Many of you are sitting out here. I was taught so many stories in the Bible, what it meant to be a Christian, and how to love. I began to understand what it meant to be a follower of Christ, but still at that time, I did not fully grasp the concept. I knew the basics, and that being a Christian was an awesome thing and something I wanted to be a part of. When middle school hit, it was finally time to go through confirmation. And at that time, I finally understand, started understanding as we dug through the Bible and talked more about Jesus and his disciples. Then we had the big confirmation retreat where we became even closer with one another and dug even deeper into the Bible and played all kinds of games. One of my biggest memories from confirmation was the morning after we had the retreat, we sat up on the third story and we had breakfast. I ate over 12 donuts and everyone thought I was crazy. I thought I was a little crazy myself. I'll never forget the memories I made throughout confirmation. Also that year, I got to go to the Great Escape. I absolutely loved it. The speakers were fantastic and it really made a big impact on my journey through faith. Through middle school, I went to the Great Escape every year and continued to let my faith grow. When high school hit, I was ready for even more growth and a deeper faith. I was able to go to Honduras two times and make a big impact on so many people. Also, I was able to experience Montreat for the first time this year and everything wonderful that comes with going to Montreat. Growing up in the church has enabled me to gain so many memories I will keep for a lifetime. Not only do I get to have these amazing memories, but I have grown to have a strong faith in the Lord Jesus. This journey through faith and life wouldn't have been possible if I did not have my church family supporting me through the great and bad times of my life. Whether I lost loved ones, was injured, which happened a lot, not having such a great day, or even having the best day, I could always count on everyone in my church family to pick me up or celebrate with me and remind me that Christ has a plan for me and loved me so dearly. I have no clue where life might take me, but I always know I have an extended family right here at the church I can count on no matter what. Thank you. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Casey Cheatham. I was born and raised in Winter Haven, Florida, and, I've been and I'll be attending the University of Central Florida in the fall studying radio television. Now, I was born and raised in First Presbyterian Church also, and I'm actually the fifth generation to go here. And I'm surprised they still allow, us, allow my family to come here because we can be crazy sometimes. Let's see. Growing up at First Pres has truly been a blessing in my life and has taught me so many things about myself and our Lord and Savior. I can remember the days when I was a little kid in Sunday school being taught the building blocks of our faith that stick with us our whole entire life. Um, from the silly games we play to the stories like Jonah and the well, they stuck with me as I grew older in the church and moved on to middle school. One of the funnest weekends I've ever had at this church was the night or the weekend we spent at the confirmation retreat. After three months of meeting early on Wednesday afternoons before middle school youth group, um, let's see, middle school youth group um, we were able to put together our statements of faith and also figure out how competitive Dr. Negley is at crab soccer. It's, it's scary. <laughs> After the confirmation retreat, we were officially members of the church, and that gave us a say. And also, if we want, in the church directory, we can have our own picture. After confirmation, I slowly started to fade out in middle school youth, being my life, taking over by, uh, my life being taken over by sports. After I finished middle school, high school came at me at full speed ahead, and I somehow forgot about youth group. 
But then God worked a miracle. He put Rachel Little in front of me after church one Sunday, and she invited me to the lock-in at that the high school youth was having that weekend. After a little questioning like, who is this lady talking to me? And my mom saying, you should go. I decided to go. So I went to the lock-in, and that was the most life-changing experience and impactful weekend I've ever had. It was awesome to see how a high school youth group was, and of course, to be a champion at Sardines, like, you have to be good at that if you want to be a high school youth group. And, but after attending that lock-in, I was a regular at youth group every Sunday. Soon, I was posed the question, do you want to go to Montreat with us? At first, I was like, Montreat, yeah, um, I'll pass. But then Rachel kept saying, you'll have a great time. It's like nothing you have ever done before. So after a little deliberation with my parents, I decided to go. And let me tell you, if you ever have the chance to go to Montreat, it will truly change your life. From small groups not knowing a single person to hanging out with your back home group. It's an overall amazing experience. And I wouldn't have been able to experience Montreat if it wasn't for Rachel asking me to go to this lock-in. After going to Montreat for the past four years, I have to say, I've been truly blessed to go. Every year has taught me a new story, a new outlook, and a different view of the world. But one of the major points that have stuck with me over the past four trips to Montreat was that God puts every person in front of you for a reason. And he has a plan for you, no matter where you are, from just sitting at home to sitting in these pews today. God has a plan. This phrase not only makes me think about why God made me, had me up in Montreat, but also why he put this church in my life and why he has a mission for me and for you. When we finish our freshman year of high school, we are also given the opportunity to travel to Honduras and participate in the mission trip. I've been fortunate enough to go two times in my high school career, and I plan to go on future trips. But traveling to Honduras makes you realize how fortunate we are to live in the United States and not in poverty. While this past trip, we may have not seen as many people as compared to years past, but there is one thing that struck me one of the last nights we were there. We were out hanging by the pool. On the past mission trips, we've experienced so much more medical care, and we just helped more people. But this year, we didn't see as many people. We saw more fellowship with the Honduran youth and the Honduran people. And it just is incredible the lasting relationships we make. And I know that will pick back up right when we land in Tegucigalpa again and walk through the airport and see our brothers and sisters. But maybe God sent us to Honduras on this last mission trip, not to give us much medical care to the people, but actually gain and build relationships. I actually just said that. <laughs> this blew my mind that actually in Montreat, just a few weeks later, after going to Honduras, that lowly our pastor said, God puts every person in front of us. And I know God has a plan, and he put every person in Honduras in front of me so I could help them and grow a relationship with them. And also, God puts this church in front of me to, for a reason. First Pres taught me how to be a Christian. And I'm thankful for everything that First Pres has blessed me with. I'm beyond thankful for all the volunteers and leaders and pastors for helping me and everyone else in youth group grow, giving up their time with their family to help our faith grow in Christ. Now there's one thing Dana always tells us, and that's for our faith to be sticky and to stay with us wherever we go. And I know God has a plan for my faith to stick, and it all started at my baptism when the congregation said, we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Warren Gerard, and I'd like to share a story with all of you. This story is about the impact this church has had on my life throughout the years. Since the day I was born, First Press has been the only church I have ever attended. My family has been members of this church long before I was born, and we attended church services and church events every year. I was involved in several church activities throughout the years, such as Vacation Bible School, Sunday School, and Christ Kids. Even though I was involved in these church programs, I wasn't truly involved. In the past, I didn't have a strong sense of faith and usually dread going to those events, as I was a very shy person and liked to keep to myself. Physically, I was involved in the church, yet I wasn't spiritually. Because of my reclusiveness, most of the people that were around my age were strangers to me. All the other kids were strangers to me during my elementary and middle school years. I would have never imagine at the time 
that many of those people would become my friends and four of them my best friends. The four people that will later become my best friends are Josh Baker, Emily Snyder, Casey Cheatham, and Hadley Owen. We call ourselves the squad. I remained a shy and reclusive person until my first trip to Montreat in 2012 when everything changed. During the bus ride, I met a very nice and wise person. This person was Mrs. Harris, who was our bus driver that year. Because of her wise advice she gave me while everyone was, everyone was asleep, I made the decision to open up and come out of my shell. I expected everyone to ignore me and think of me as some weird kid when I made the decision to myself and not the shy person I had always been. The response I got from everyone was the complete opposite of what I expected. Everyone was friendly and laughed at most of my jokes and my stories, which I didn't really understand and still don't understand because to me, they weren't that funny. <laughs> During my first time on tree, I understood what faith I understood what faith was and affirmed my beliefs. After Montreat, I became more involved in the church and started enjoying going to youth group. I and always looking forward to the talks I had with Mrs. Harris, which helped me make many difficult decisions throughout high school. My life would change once again on another church trip, which was my first trip to Honduras two years ago. Before the trip, I thought the people of third world countries, such as Honduras, were lazy and ignorant, based on what I had read and watched on TV. During my trip, I learned the truth, which was that the people of Honduras and elsewhere were not like that. They were hardworking people who were just like me, and like everyone else, they strived for a better life. Some of my best memories are from that trip. One was from when we were driving home from Miami in the old Lincoln, in which we sang funny songs, took each other to death, and told lots of funny stories. This summer, I went back to Honduras and did and saw many memorable things and made several new friends. One of the most memorable things I did this year was to touch the Pacific Ocean for the first time in my life. Another trip I went on this year was to Montreat, which was happy yet a sad time for us seniors for it marked the end of our days as youths. Many youth members were sad at the candlelight ceremony on the last day of Montreat because the seniors wouldn't be able to come anymore. As for me, I was sad but also happy since the other seniors and I are starting the next chapter of our lives and shouldn't be sad but happy that the next generation of youth will fill our place of which the church will be, have an impact on their lives and improve it for the better like it has done for our lives. I would like to thank Dana, Mrs. Harris, Miss Peggy, and all the adults who came to our youth groups and made them possible. I'd also like to thank Dr. Negley, Dr. Harvey, and Jean Aspey for organizing Honduras. And I'd like to thank the congregation for being involved in my life and making such a big impact on it.
Even though it says we're going to stand, I want to try something. Please be seated. <laughs> it works. <laughs> we need some thank yous today. You've heard some names mentioned. And what I would like to do is I'd like to recognize Dana Parrish, who's our Director of Student Ministries. Dana's over here, and she hates attention. But Dana, can you stand for just a second? Let's thank Dana for all her work with the Now, Danny, you can sit for a second, but I'm going to ask some other folks to stand up. You've heard these young people talk about their life in faith here at the church. So if you have been a volunteer with our senior high or middle school youth group during the time that these young people up front have been involved in senior high or middle school, so if in the last 10 years you have volunteered with our high school or middle school youth group, would you please stand for a second? You should look around. Stay standing, if you will. If you have taught Sunday school to any of these young people that you see down front, or vacation Bible school, or if you've chaperoned any of their youth outings or trips, would you please stand? If you have prepared a meal for any of our youth programs, if you've helped out in any of those support ways, would you please stand? Casey's right. When we baptize a child in this church, we say they are now received as members into the Christ Church. Do you, the members of this congregation, on behalf of the whole Church of Jesus Christ, pledge to undertake with them the Christian nurture, with their parents, the Christian nurture of this child? So if you have done anything in order to do, take part in the Christian nurture of these young people, just join me now in applauding what they have done. Please be seated for another second. Next week when you come into church, you will see a brochure like this that will be in the, in the pews. At that time, it will be revised, and it will include something on the back, which is 2016. This is the brochure that talks about the Youth Scholarship Program at First Presbyterian Church, recognizing and honoring high school graduates. The C.A. Hines Memorial Scholarship, Bob Hines, a member of our congregation, encouraged us over a decade ago to be involved in the process of giving scholarships to deserving young people in our church. Bob Hines inaugurated this scholarship in memory and honor of his father, Charles A. Hines. He was born way back in 1905. He attended school through the eighth grade and then he went to work in a grocery store. By the end of his career, he opened his own store. He semi-retired to Clearwater, Florida. Bob decided to honor his father by giving a youth scholarship in name of his father. And every year since, since 2010, one of our high school seniors has been honored as the C.A. Hines Memorial Scholar. They receive a gift that helps them further their education. Bob Baker in our congregation died a few years ago, and Bob's family decided to join the tradition that Bob Hines had created, and they established the Bob Baker Memorial Scholarship. Bob was born in 1957. Bob's passions included racing and humor. In fact, a quote from Bob um, Baker is, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> he also was a person who worked hard through his life and put himself in many ways through school. And so part of the Bob Baker Memorial Scholarship is somebody who can tell a good joke and somebody who has worked while they have gone through high school. Then a couple of years ago, the Mary and John Gray Scholarship was established. Kay Gray Weeks and Jay Gray and their families established this scholarship in memory of their mother, Mary Gray, and to honor their father, John Gray. Now that scholarship has been established at the Community Foundation in Winter Haven, but First Presbyterian is the recipient of those funds for our high school scholarship program. And what they do there is they talk about Mary's involvement as a teacher of children in our community and in our church and how John continues to be involved in faith activities here in our church and throughout the community. And so those scholarship funds again go along with the other scholarships to help deserving young people from our congregation further their educations. You've heard that our young people are going off. Now you are heading to Valencia. 
uh, to Polk State first, then to Valencia. So you do have a plan for your education. And so we're celebrating with all of our seniors. This year there were four applicants for our scholarships. And you saw them up here as they presented the message of God's word today. So I announced today that the Bob Baker Scholarship, because Casey was employed during his high school career, goes to Casey Cheatham. So congratulations, Katie, Casey. Also, Bob Baker in his scholarship said, and I'm not going to catch you just off site, but next time I see you up front, a good, appropriate joke is something you always carry with you. So no, don't start here on short notice. Next time I see you, I'm going to ask you to tell me a good, appropriate joke. Stay right here, if you will. The C.A. Hines Scholarship is awarded today to Warren Gerard. And the generosity of all these scholarships allows us to expand beyond three people when there is a year when we need to. And so the John and Mary Grace scholarships this year are presented to Emily Alexander and Hadley Owen. So on behalf of these scholarship funds that were given to our church, we will stay in contact with the institution that you attend at least one more time. This fall, they'll get a check from the church to go into your account to further your education. And so I want to thank Bob Hines, who helped us to dream the scholarship up, the Baker family and the Gray family. Let's thank them for their generosity. <laughs> Wonderful job. And you all may be seated for our benediction today. The preacher that you heard mentioned at Montreat is actually a pastor in our presbytery. Her name is Loli Martin Ross Ryder, and Loli is the pastor of the Presbyterian Church in Sefner. Loli proudly describes herself as a Christian who is of Puerto Rican descent, and so she's bilingual. And Loli was the preacher at Montreat this year. Our young people brought back many things from Montreat this year, and one of them that they brought back was a benediction that Loli pronounced at worship. And so Casey Ray, who is a lot better in Spanish than I am, he texted lowly and asked for permission to use her benediction. And so in the tradition of our church, the benediction is God's blessing upon the people, and it's usually pronounced by an ordained minister. So I will help him with the benediction. Now, please stand. Hear God's blessing upon you. You have heard the word of God expressed in the words of these people. You have been a part of the body of Christ, and now we are prepared to go out and to make a difference in this world in each and every day. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Jehová te bendiga y te guarda. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Jehová haga resplandecer su rostro delante de ti y tenga de ti misericordia. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Jehová alce sobre ti su, su rostro y ponga en ti paz. Amen. There we go.
shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of 